Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. We are in the magic back room at Baxter Cycle, surrounded by a, an amazing assortment of British hot rods. But what are we going to look at today? Well, motorcycle I actually know very little about, but I'm just overwhelmed by its beauty. So I think we'll go with this one. It's just a fabulous looking thing. This is a 1974 Norton Roadster 850. There's a tag for it. It's got this red, white, and blue paint job. Got a lot of, you know, a lot of shiny parts. Just a lot of shiny everywhere. Everything is just beautifully done. I mean, it's just a fabulous looking thing. Does not have electric start. That's where the starter would go. I think 75 was the first year for the electric start. It's just a beautiful looking thing. You know, we saw a little bit of this bike a week or so ago. Just a clip it was up on the stand getting worked on. Looks like concentric carburetors, a pair of those. You know, oh, overhead valves, cams are down here. Points are under this cover here. Here's a mechanical tack drive. Just look at this art. I just, I love this kind of thing. And this is really a king of it all. Got a little slant to the forward to the engine compared to the Atlas, which had the more vertical thing and also 750. Uh, story goes they had to bend, they had to make these special intakes to get this to bend because they lane the motor forward. I love these oil lines right here. Looks like the oil comes from down here, up, and into these. And it, they probably, uh, so from here they go into the valves, um, with rock, where the rocker, rocker arms are. And then they probably uh, fall back down the intake tubes onto the cams and then into the sump and then pumped into the tank. But what a beautiful, beautiful looking machine. Just a gorgeous thing, isn't it? Just a beautiful thing. I'm not sure what this is. Y'all know, please post. It's got that rubber mount for the engine already on this one. Elasto, whatever they call it. Dual down tube frame. Here's the coils. I'm sure there's two of them. Yes, yes there are. Isn't that just gorgeous? And of course this beautiful paint. Just look at this thing. Absolutely. You know, this is not original paint, of course, but just so well done. I love it. I love it. These kind of adjusters on the rear. Got these pencil pipes in the back. This is the uh, Speedo Drive back here. Spoke rims, of course. Nice back end here. Just a beautiful thing. Beautiful. Let's jump up here. Check out this whole front end. So this is probably the beginning of the disc brake era. Just, but look at this. Let's just take a good look at this. Just soak that in. Metal fender. You know, these beautiful... Everything's just... Anyway, the beginning of the... Uh, Disc brake era it says Norton Lockheed. So Lockheed was a creator of these brake systems that they were using. Just a beautiful. If you feel these discs, they they feel thicker than modern ones. I don't know why that is, but uh, a little overbuilding maybe. Big single piston right there. You know, hydraulic. Here's the hydraulics up here. <laughs> just slowly. We'll, we'll look at this in a minute. But uh, very well done. Look at that hub. Isn't that just beautiful? Polished hub. I like everything about this. We'll get a good look here. The uh, looks like the transmission and the engine are still separate. Maybe that was a trait that carried Norton all to the end. If you look at this, I'm sorry we're so tight in here, but I don't want to have to move the bike. This single bolt is what held this whole cover on. There's no perimeter bolts or fasteners on this here. So this is put on with a gasket. This bolt's tight and that sucks the whole thing in, tightens it all up. Something else to look at here. So here's the brake. Runs a cable right here. And that cable runs back to the shoe, so it's a it's a drum brake on the rear. You know what I was looking for the other day was the electronics for this. Where would that be? Oh, right back here. Check that out. So that was the electronics of the time, microelectronics of the time for the brake light. I just want to point this out. It was the same thing on the other side, but look at how these are attached. Beautiful. Kickstart only, of course. There's a kicker. Big old air cleaner. I like it. I like that a lot. Cover on this side, cover on that side. I suppose you got to pop the seat to pull the uh, to check your oil, maybe. I'm not sure about that. If you all know, like I said, please post. Uh, this is like I said, a video of opportunity, so we're just kind of taking what we can. Made in England, Norton. There's a beautiful back end there. Look how thin those tires are compared to modern bikes. You know, just really well done. Look at these uh, open springs, tube tube swing arm. Just a fabulous thing, fabulous thing. Check out that front end. I like it. Uh, let's jump up here. So uh, let's look at the, uh, it's got these uh, kind of a barrel shaped grip. Maybe a hot rod clutch right there. I'm guessing that's the choke. Not sure what all these are. Very nice, very nice bike. 
that's probably a kill switch here. Gauges on this are Smiths. They are Smiths. Not these are probably magnetic and not the chromatics anymore. This is your headlight switch here, off and on. Your high low switch is over here, probably one of these. I'm just guessing. That one maybe. Maybe one of these are the blinkers. Not sure. Same thing on this. Side. Beautiful, beautiful. And then check out this gas cap. If I can figure out how to make it work. I think you push that in and it pops up like that. Oh, very nice. That's a new rubber gasket and everything. So, same thing to put it down. A little snap. So, there's the button. Push it in. Pops open. I like it. Very well done. Very well done. It's just a beautiful machine, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful machine. Center stand, of course. I like that a lot. Just a fabulous machine. Some of the other bikes in here we're going to take a quick look at. We're going to do try to do a video on this uh, pretty soon. But there's a lot more to this particular motorcycle than I know of. And uh, I'm waiting for the guy that he's out of town, the guy that knows all about it. And I want to get some good information for you all on this one. But uh, real, really neat. It's a Trident, Trident, Trident motor. And I think we did a video on this one already. But uh, anyway, if you all are interested in anything like this, or a near-used Royal Enfield Triumph, Classic vintage bike of any type. Get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle in the mighty Minneapolis of Marney, Iowa. Parts, gear, anything like that. They've got the largest assortment of classic British motorcycle parts in all of North America. They've got warehouses full of this stuff. They can help you out. BaxterCycle.com, my friends. Now get out there and ride. Wahoo! Look at this. These were just kind of sitting here when I pulled up earlier. This is a matchless of some sort. I don't know enough about them to tell you what they are. And the people that know aren't here today. This is a, a customer's bike, so we cannot even try to ride them. Looks like a parallel twin. I would guess it's an overhead valve. Single carburetor. Here's an oil tank, so dry sump. Looks like the transmission and the engine are separate. Here's a gear indicator, four speed. Kick start. I don't see a starter anywhere. Looks like a distributor there, so there's probably coils somewhere. Really nifty, isn't it? Not sure, it's got a nacelle. Check that out, isn't that cool? Very nice, very nice. Kind of a good looking bike, isn't it? Very unique, If I, I wish I knew more about it. If I find anything else out, I'll uh, try to put it in the uh, writing.